Now we will discuss about the secondary impairment. Impairment and complication. Okay. So spinal cord injury patients faces lot of secondary impairment and complication during the time of acute hospitalization and rehabilitation okay it is basically because of the prolonged immobilization immobilization and and lots of other effect due to the spinal cord injury So the secondary complication is because of prolonged immobilization and spinal cord injury has widespread effect on the other physiological system of the body. Okay. So in secondary complication first we will say respiratory complication. Respiratory complication. Okay. We have already seen in previous video about the respiratory complication so because of spinal cord injury the thoracic expansion decreases which leads to the expansion decreases which leads to the decreases in the inspiratory volume volume and also the Force expiratory technique like coughing and huffing get impaired. Impaired means ineffective. So which leads to this secretion, accumulation of secretion, accumulation of secretion. Okay, which leads to the Atelectasis, atelectasis, and pneumonia. Yeah. Okay. Now the second second complication is pressure source. Pressure source is the ulceration of soft tissue. Okay, it is ulceration of. soft tissue okay and it is because of the unrelieved pressures and shearing force it is because of unrelieved pressure pressure and shearing force force so there are many factors contribute to the pressure the pressure sir okay so these factors are primary factors are impaired sensory and inability to change the position inability to change position so other factors are the loss of bmc or vasomotor control okay spasticity skin maceration skin maceration due to moisture moisture and nutritional deficiency deficiency it is basically low serum protein content and anemia hala low protein content and anemia okay how so how to treat the pressure source basically so position change should be implemented in every 2 hour okay monitor the skin conditions and patient education is required patient education about the condition education okay and uh, 
position change in every two hour okay and inspection of the skin skin okay and also different type of bed systems is used okay basically couch is modified okay so alpha bed it is called as air bed or alpha bed and water bed is also used now we will discuss about this other complication like deep vein thrombosis okay so dbt results from the development of thrombus inside the vessels okay thrombus formation thrombus formation inside the vessel okay okay which leads to the emboli emboli leads to the pulmonary infarction pulmonary infarction okay and it is actually this dbt is due to loss of normal pumping mechanism pumping mechanism okay slow blood flow slow blood flow okay which allow higher concentration of pro pro coagulant okay pro coagulant okay because of this slow blood flow okay so prolonged press prolonged pressure also prolonged pressure damage to the vessels wall okay so the clinical feature is swelling erythema swelling erythema and heat at that localized site heat at localized site okay so what are the treatment for this so profi prophylactic anticoagulant is gi given immediately after the injury to and it is continued at least up to 2 to 3 month anticoagulant therapy okay therapy and the pt management is pt management is uh, range of motion exercise like passive range of motion exercise then stocking elastic stocking is used used elastic stocking is run the lower extremity bilateral lower extremity and positioning of the lower extremity for to facilitate the venous drainage venous return facilitation so basically treatment rom exercise elastic stocking and positioning now we will discuss about the other complication like contracture it is basically due to prolonged shortening of prolonged shortening of structure around joint around joint okay which leads to the decrease in the rom means range of motion reduces so basically spasticity and flaccidity leads to the contracture spasticity and flaccidity both are the contributing factors so how spasticity it leads to the contractures spasticity put the limbs in in a particular flexed position 
of a flexed or extended position for a prolonged period of time. Okay, but in case of flaccidity, what happened? The because of the gravitational force, gravitational force, the limb set in a particular position for a prolonged period of time. Okay. And uh, the other factors are active muscle function, loss of active muscle function. Muscle function which helps in normal reciprocal stretching. Okay, normal reciprocal muscle stretching. Muscle stretching. Okay, so what is the treatment of contracture? It is again okay passive range of motion exercise okay then splinting and positioning the limb in a perfect position positioning of the limb limb now we will discuss about huh, now we will discuss about heterotropic ossification so it is the osteogenesis osteogenesis in soft tissue soft tissue okay it has unknown etiology okay basically these are tissue hypoxia tissue hypoxia and it is due to circular stasis circular stasis ok abnormal calcium metabolism calcium metabolism local pressure and micro trauma it is basically extra articular extra articular and extra capsular so basically the osteogenesis develop in between muscles and aponeurotic tissue in muscles and aponeurotic tissue tissue it is different from myositis ossification okay myositis ossification is due to the injury to the muscle leads to bony deposition within the muscle okay so the so here in heterotropic ossification there is an increase in the serum alkaline phosphatase serum alkaline phosphatase phosphatase ok so the treatment is diphosphatase a pharmacological treatment ok first diphosphatase is given which inhibit the calcium phosphate formation calcium phosphate formation ok so pain is a major problem in spinal cord injury patient ok so basically the patient experience different type of pains one by one we will discuss the first is traumatic pain so traumatic pain it is because of the due to the injury ok so the injury leads to the fracture it is because of injury of heart tissue heart tissue and soft tissue and soft tissue ok heart tissue means it is a fracture of bone ok fracture of bone and soft tissue injury ok which leads to the muscle spasm and arc ok which leads to the muscle spasm and pain and basically it is healed in 1 to 3 months 1 to 3 months which is healing time right. 
okay so the second type is norb root bank okay it is due to the damage to norb root and it is due to damage to the norb root norb root okay and patient experience basically sharp stabbing and burning shooting pain okay the feature of pain are sharp stabbing like pain burning and shooting pain shooting pain okay the third type is spinal dysesthesia spinal cord dysesthesia spinal cord dysesthesia okay so what happen in spinal cord dysesthesia patient experience burning numbness pain and needle like sensation needle like sensation and it is basically due to the scarring at distal end of severe spinal cord okay it is because of scarring at distal end injured spinal cord okay injured spinal cord okay and also it is called as phantom pain then other varieties of pain is musculoskeletal pain the musculoskeletal pain is it is due to the basically spasm and contracture structure okay then the other variety of pain is osteoporosis porosis and renal calculi renal calculi okay it is due to the increase in so osteoporosis and renal calculi pain it is due to the increase in bone resorption resorption okay which leads to the osteoporosis osteoporosis hyper hyper calcurea urea okay osteoporosis also in osteoporosis also patient experience pain and hyper calcurea leads to the okay kidney stone formation stone formation 